Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make a very simple Christmas tree uh, hook. Now, this hook can be used to hang up stockings, book bags, it's great stocking stuffer, uh, it's a pretty simple design and it's fairly quick and easy to make. Now, that before we get into it, this is in conjunction with a ebook that Jessica and I are selling. It is called The Guide to 10 Hand Forged Christmas Gifts. Now, there's going to be some other gifts added to that as we go along throughout the years. We'll eventually upgrade it to an ultimate guide to hand forged Christmas gifts, uh, but you guys can check that out in the future. So if you want a complete cost breakdown of time and materials along with the SEO and uh, uh, approximate price and profit margin that you can get from selling these sort of things during the Christmas season, I suggest you check the link out in the description down below. Uh, the link in the description down below, uh, it leads you over to our website, blacksmithpds.com, and you can check it out there. Also, I will put on screen right now a playlist section where you can see all of the gifts that have been made so far. Uh, and last but not least, final thing, I'm going to give you the dimensions of this item here now, but if you would like a free template that comes with that ebook on how to cut this piece out here, that has all the measurements on it here, has the overall dimensions that you can just cut out out of a standard piece of copy paper and paste to your metal. You can check, that'll be in the ebook as well. So make sure you check that out if you're interested in such a thing. So I'll go over the measurements really quickly. It is 10 inches long, start to finish. That's what we're starting with, our starting material size by two inches wide or 250 mil long by 50 mil wide. This section here is one inch. So we basically cut in from each end and we left about a one inch strip all the way down or a 25 mil strip. That's for the hook portion itself. Without further ado, let's get this hot and we will work on texturing our Christmas tree first. Okay, so now hopefully you guys can see what I did there. Basically, I used a sharper cross peen hammer and I used it by drawing in a tangent like so, working out the leaves from center. And that gives you something that looks like that. That's a fairly nice texture. I think it looks pretty close to what a Christmas tree would look like with its needles. Now, you've got some options here that you can work with. Let me grab my punches here. One that I've been particularly liking is I've been liking to use a eye punch for like an animal eye punch. This is a quarter inch round animal eye punch. I like to take and drive that down in there to represent like the little uh, ornaments on the tree. And then I also like to come back through with a center punch and punch it at random areas to act like the Christmas lights that are on a tree. So this is like the Christmas ornaments and this is like the Christmas lights. You can do whatever you like. You can get as decorative with this as you want. You can go really a deep dive down this little rabbit hole when it comes to decorating these things. I'm not going to do that for the video de demonstration. I'm just going to, the next heat, I will go ahead and punch these in. It, there's nothing to it other than just driving it straight down in and not punching all the way through. Then we will flip this around and we will forge out this fishtail section. This is going to become a scroll, a little fishtail scroll out the end, and we need to gain just a wee bit of length here uh, to make a really nice looking hook. So I'll do that here in the next heat.
Okay, so now this next part's completely optional, but I'm going to add in some cross-chased lines. So this is just going to be, you know, some cross-chasing, like little hash mark lines. You do this with a cold chisel. This is a one inch wide cold chisel. And there's no real secret to it here. You just do what looks good to you and cut it in at that and try not to make any double cuts when you're doing it. Try to keep in the same groove and the whole nine yards as you do these right on down the piece. Uh, again, this isn't needed, but I think it adds just that little extra kind of put togetherness here. You can go simpler if you like, and sometimes it's those little simple things without any a whole lot of elaboration that look the nicest. So something to keep in mind. Uh, if you want to go more elaborate, you can do what I'm doing here, which is just chiseling in some lines. Now, if you haven't seen him yet, uh, John Switzer over at Black Bear Forge, he did a video, I believe, I want to believe it was a poker, a fire poker handle. I'll put a link to that right here. He did one where he did these uh, lines in it. I thought it looked very Nordic-like. I kind of like that look, and so therefore, uh, this is a complete rip off of that, and I believe he got it off of some smiths down in Mexico, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, again, great video, great guy. Subscribe to his channel. I'll put a link there and a one in the description that you guys can uh, go check him out. Again, that's John Switzer at Black Bear Forge. You can go check out his videos. So again, this is completely optional, but if you are going to be doing this, I'd like to make a suggestion. When you cut in your lines, Make sure they're at a 45 degree angle and evenly spaced. It's very easy to get these off to one side and before you know it, you've got a small triangle on one side and a big triangle on the other. Uh, it's not the end of the world if that happens to you, but it looks nicer if you can keep them all even. Also, you don't have to do this while hot, although I find that it kind of doesn't jump around as much if you do it hot. So. I like doing them hot if I can. You don't have to do them hot. You can do this after the piece is cooled down sufficiently. So I'm putting those on the inside of what will become the inside of this hook. And then I'm going to flip it over and I'm also going to put it on the back side. So I'll go ahead and do a little, short little time lapse and be right back with you after I get all that chisel work done and we'll move right on. Okay, now that I've got that done, <clears throat> we're going to flip the textured side of this Christmas tree over the step of the anvil, and we're going to take and give this thing some curvature. Don't worry about it getting crooked, we're going to fix that here in a second. And now, to give it a little reverse curvature, we're going to hit to each side of the bump, kind of flatten out the ends again. This is just to give this thing where it stands off the wall a bit. We want that to kind of stand off the wall. Aim down a little bit. There we go. Gonna watch getting any sharp lines in this. <coughs> any real weird bad hammer marks. The ideal is to get a little bit of curvature to it, but still allow it to lay flush against the wall. So now you can see how those lines look in there and all that good stuff. We'll give this a quick brushing and we're going to flip it over to the other end. Now you might be asking yourself, well how are you going to hang this hook, Roy? Well, one of those mini center punch marks now can be mounting holes. Uh, we will wait to do that and you just drill those. It's just as quick to drill them, that way you can be accurate. And if something goes awry, you bend the hook a little much or a little less than one or the other, uh, you can take that into account with these holes. If you just go ahead and punch them now, then you're fighting those holes getting all crooked and weird on you. Uh, so I don't suggest that. So now we will go ahead and roll the scroll on this. We'll do the fishtail scroll 
and then bend it into a hook. As you can see, I put that chasing on the back side of that hook so this way when it comes up, when this comes up and faces you, you can see some of this chased work, the line work, on the underside of the hook. Okay, we're going to cool off this fish tail, so we don't want that to move at all, and we're going to bend our hook now. We want a nice soft bend if we can get it at first, and then we'll tighten up this bend at the bottom of this hook and work it into shape. And you'll have to adjust this shape however you see fit to work for your own purposes. Just think a lot of nice blowing lines is what you want. And for everything to be square in the long run. If it's not square, it'll certainly show it on the wall. Especially when your customer hangs it square. And there you have it. So now your options are pretty simple. Uh, you've got a couple options that you can do for this. You can brass brush it. You can highlight it in that way. I'll grab that. Let's do that on this one here. You can finish this off with some Rust-Oleum uh, clear coat. After you get everything brass brushed and it's cooled down and you get your holes drilled in it. Or you can do like I do and you can just rub it down with some paste wax which will work just fine as well uh, again this is an indoor thing so you know this is something that somebody's going to have indoors and it's going to be in a controlled environment so it's not imperative or super important that you get a completely impervious finish on it uh, to all harm or anything. It's okay to go with some natural or finishes because it's an indoor use thing. So I'm going to give this a couple quick scuffings. And we'll see like that. I'll be back after I get this finished with some Minwax. Okay, I got some uh, Minwax here, paste finish, finishing wax. I'm going to rub this on the surface here. Um, one thing I'd like to point out is be careful whenever you're using stuff like this. This is toxic. This isn't good for your health. Be careful for it. You know, you want to do this in a well-ventilated area. What I'm doing right now, I'm just doing this on camera, basically, uh, you know, as a demonstration piece. So my shop is fairly well-ventilated, but if you're going to be doing quite a few of these and things like that, uh, it's best to take all your health precautions seriously and do this, say, outdoors. But this finish really puts on a really nice, beautiful finish. This wax does when it gets on there. Hopefully you all can see how pretty that's becoming. Uh, it really does do a nice job. And it goes on. It kind of leaves it on pretty thick. And how you know that you've got enough on there is it'll be basically water repellent at the end of all this. So there we go. Alright. And that is finished.
Grab this again and show it off to you. Anyways, that's it for today. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please leave me a like. Um, comment what you thought down below. And, you know, consider subscribing to the channel. Also, be on the lookout for more videos in this video series. Again, they will be in a playlist that's linked up in the description down below. Uh, anyways, also, last but not least, I'll reiterate again for those of you that maybe skipped ahead of the intro. If you want to take and get the complete cost breakdown on how many hours and so on and so forth that it takes to make these, cost of materials, possible profit, things like that, and ways of selling this with all your SEO stuff figured out, go check out blacksmithpdfs.com and look for the ebook titled The Guide to 10 Hand Forged Christmas Gifts. We have high qual we have high color photographs and everything, high quality photographs of what it should look like uh, in the finished product and uh, a lot of good information there for you. So again, God bless you all. And as always, we will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.